Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Astral Sorcery. Today I'm going to be teaching you about a whole bunch of wonderful tools and abilities and cool things that you can make with Starlight Infusion. And that's not all. We're currently now on 116.4 Minecraft. This is not just on 115 anymore. So you can see before me, I have a Starlight Infuser. But first, we're not going to cover that. We're going to open the book. <laughs> because I'm going to show you a little bit of all the things I intend on covering today. This is the constellation chapter that you can see over here. And we're going to be starting off with the illumination wand, moving on to the starlight infusion. We're also going to be covering infused crystal tools, tree farming, resplendent prisms, and ritual anchors. So first things first, let's start with the illumination wand. Don't worry, we'll get to this almost immediately afterwards. The illumination wand is actually a rather simple thing to make. Just a bunch of illumination powder, some ruined marble, and a shifting star, one of those dangerous items I told you before, that will remove all of your XP and attunement so that you can start over anew if you so desire. But you don't have to use it for that, you can use it as a crafting item. For this, the all-powerful illumination wand. And it does a lot more than you might think. It illuminates. And it makes invulnerable blocks. Those are the two basic things. Now, if you notice here, I've got a rainbow of colors. That's right, you can actually color it to your heart's content. All you need to do is just combine it in a crafting grid, like so, with some kind of dye. In this case, let's grab some, some blue, put it in there, and you can change it to the color that you desire. Otherwise, standard, once you've made this thing on your altar, it will start out as yellow. And... When you click on the ground, it will create a little kind of light source, basically. If you want that light source to go away, there are two ways of doing it. Either you place a block and snuff it out, or you right-click again. It's the same stuff that you make with illumination powder. But with this wand, you have an extra mode that you can use. Now, if you look on the above my, my hotbar there, you'll see that I have like this little green area. That's how much it uses of my starlight charge to place a light. Now if I'm underground in the caves, obviously it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do so. This is why you're probably going to want to use one of those cave illuminators from an earlier chapter uh, to highlight or to light things up underground. Unless of course you've, you know, focused your perk growing stuff on kind of increasing your, your starlight charge. But anyway, that's how much it'll use to place one light. Now, if you want to kind of make a block invulnerable to being mined or blowing up or anything like that, then you'll want to sneak and right click and it will turn it into a translucent version, which then, you know, is invulnerable unless, of course, you're in creative mode, in which case you can then still break it. But, you know, if you want to change it back, you do so like that. Now, if you are on uh, some kind of like astral altar or anything like that, and you change some of the blocks to being like the invulnerable version like this then you, you might have a slight problem because it will no longer count that block as part of the uh, multi-block structure. So your altars might break or, or just not work until you revert it back to its original uh, type. Now, it's not going to work on everything. It'll only work on full solid blocks. It does not work on things like you know pillars that are going up the side there because they're like kind of have a, a weird shape to them, hoppers, entities, things like that. It's not going to work. But it will work to help you, you know, capture things like withers and whatnot. And as you can see here, there's a very large array of colors to choose from. This is all 16 colors of uh, the default Minecraft stuff that you can have. And it reflects it with the wand itself. That, that's pretty much it. It's really nice for a lot of things. Just having an infinite torch that can recharge itself uh, is already invaluable as it is, let alone having something that can also make blocks kind of just invulnerable. You all ready? So this is the Starlight Infuser. I have other mods in here with this currently. If you haven't already guessed, up here I've got Zero's Minimap. I currently have Fluid Tank mod, which is actually a really good fluid mod for 116.4, uh, as well as a few other versions. Uh, and I also have the mm -mm 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 mod, or dummy mod, depending upon how you want it to be uh, referred to, just for uh, kind of showcasing some of the things that you might be able to do. Now, in this case, Starlight Infuser is here. I have created one. You just have to craft it on your altar that you made as of, you know, previous chapters in your book, which isn't too bad to make. 
and it will take a few moments to actually create it. And as before, you place it down, you, you know, right click on here with, sorry, if you, if you right click on the Starlight Infuser when it doesn't have any kind of, uh, uh, you know, structure set up, it will show you what it is to look like. Now, let's actually go into the research here. Go in there, click on Starlight Infusion, and you can see this is the structure that you're going to have to make. Now, it actually has empty spots around here. They are going to be empty as part of the diagram because you need to fill them with liquid starlight. That's a lot of liquid starlight. That is 12 buckets of liquid starlight that you're going to need to fill in here. And when you infuse something on this starlight infuser, there's a chance it will use up one of those buckets. And therefore, you'll have to potentially bucket some more in. Now, you might have it already in some of your, your uh, little starlight, uh, liquid starlight generators, or you might have some stored, or just some, you know, plonked in like a hole in the ground or something like that, like I've, I've done when I, I have not had things like fluid tank in, installed. Um, or I haven't <laughs> actually got to the astral sorcery version of liquid storage yet. But currently, this is my method that I have desired. Now, how does this work? You place it down once you've got your structure built then all you need to do is place a tool or object that can be infused. Now, if you're unsure what it can do, you look it up, and I'm using another mod, Just Enough Items, uh, J-E-I is its abbreviation. Press R on the Starlight Infuser. You can see the recipe. You press U, and you can see its uses. There are 24 different infusions that it currently lists. The most common is going to be converting aquamarine into a resonating gem, which... Allow me to grab one of those right now just so that we can demonstrate this because you're going to need a bunch of these gems for crafting recipes. Now you notice nothing happens. All it did was just go in there. Once you right click it again with your resonating wand because this is your triggering wand for any magic to happen, it then does all sorts of cool magical stuff. It's it's really great. I love these new uh, just sounds and images and everything. It just looks fabulous. And there you go. You get yourself... One of these, which actually, can I, there we go. I just needed to get close. It's not actually, it just sits on top. <laughs> it's a resonating gem, which can be used for all sorts of different recipes, especially uh, for making yourself even more liquid starlight. Now, in this case, I think one, did one get used up? No, I don't see any creases in the liquid starlight. So I should still be able to keep doing it. Like I said, there's a chance the liquid starlight will get used up, but it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed. And you'll notice that uh, these spots here look like they're a little bit low on the edge. That's only because there isn't a block over here. If I grab a block and place it here, you'll see that it actually updates. This is something that vanilla does with liquids. So it's you really want to just look for a crease in the water. And that's going to tell you that one of those is actually low. Now, if I want to show you something real briefly here about the gem, before we move on to all the other things you can make, is that I have some of this going on. I've got the fluid tank mod hooked up underneath a light well that is currently outputting into stone tank. Now, just by putting an aquamarine in these two and having them focused briefly for with a, a collector crystal just to speed things up, before they broke, I got uh, uh, these tanks hold 16 buckets. So I got a little bit more than half here. And okay, just for reference sake, a little over 10 buckets of starlight juice. This one here, I got almost seven buckets of starlight juice. And that's just random chance, you know, for them to get through. These finally broke, but this one here, it broke right away. There's always a chance of any item that you could potentially get in here. And this is why I actually had two of these, just in case something like this happened. But it broke almost immediately. This is one of those resonating gems. This also happened with some of these ones here. Uh, so don't take this as a, this is going to happen with resonating gems all the time. But this is more likely that what's going to happen. I got almost two entire tanks of this, which means I've got 16 bu buckets of starlight juice, and I've got another almost 14 buckets on top of that just from one of these. You can get a lot of starlight from them. So it's definitely worth spending the, the single bucket to get, like, what, a potential three times the output? Even mm -hmm. if there's a possibility of things breaking, it's still going to end up working because even regular aquamarines can break. So let's continue on. Now, if I take something like a tool, put it on here, and I infuse it, do the same exact thing, I'm going to get an infused version. What does that mean? Each one is going to have a different special ability. Infused crystal pickaxes, for example, are no longer going to mine a single block. 
Now that I'm in creative, I can show you that, well, I mine now in a three by three area. If I sneak, does that disable? No, it doesn't. So you're going to want to be careful about that. You definitely are going to want to ensure that you have the tool that you want. If you don't want it to mine three by three, then don't infuse it. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of stuck with that. And yes, the plus one mining size does stack with different perks that you might unlock as well. So if you have a plus one mining size perk, then that means it'll do a five by five area and so on. Now, if I continue on with something like an infused crystal axe, I've got a tree just sitting around over here. If I mine this up, the entire tree gets harvested lickety split with no questions asked. It is done and done. Moving on, we've got the infused crystal sword. It does an area effect damage. Now, I've got the skulls on these. The mm -mm -mm mod or dummy mod will actually allow you to do uh, like if you put these on here, they're counted as like undead entities instead of just regular entities. Otherwise, these usually will show you some kind of damage. You know, you can poke it with something and it says this is how much damage you're doing. So it, that's like two and a, a, and a sixth hearts or something like that with this shovel. Now, if I use this sword, let's actually switch it out. I'll use a regular crystal sword. Now, this one only has stats of size three. This one has stats of size six. So, or, you know, six stats, this has three stats. So therefore it's going to be less damage, but look what happens. I swing, I'm hitting, right? And if I swing over here, I'm doing the sweep attack where, you know, you can hit other entities nearby. So I'm doing some damage. If I get it infused, it changes and gives you a recharge with a big area effect. And it will just pow everything in this kind of like a large circle around where you hit. And if you wait, you'll see that it's recharging right now. Once that's recharged, you can then do it again. Otherwise, when you attack, you just attack normally like you would with a regular sword until you get that big pow, and then you do tons of extra damage. And you can see it's actually a bit more damage that you normally would do than uh, just with a regular swing. So it's pretty darn good, but you gotta be careful if you're just trying to single out one or two cows and you end up using this thing, you could take out your entire herd. So yeah, something to be cautious about. Another thing, the infused crystal shovel. This will take out entire areas of whatever is annoying you that can be dug with a shovel very quick and easy. <laughs> Snow, I don't like it, one at a time. But if the recharge is finished, pow, it recharges everything in here. And yes, the cooldowns that you can get in perks can be in, you know, reduced with such you know, perks so that you can use your special infused tools much more often. Now that's not all that you can use the Starlight Infusion for. Just to show you, because I've got 24 of them listed here, you know, tossing a blaze rod on here, you can get blaze rod powder. You're thinking, all right, well, bone meal, big deal. You know, oh, wait, I can get a golden carrot from a regular carrot? Yes, yes, this is, this is what's really making things cool, is that you can actually get better ore outputs in a lot of cases, like five emeralds out of one emerald ore. You can turn an ender pearl into an eye of ender at no extra cost, at only at the risk of a bucket of liquid starlight. You can actually make ice so that you don't need to have a silk touch option. Therefore, you can just put some glass in there. You can make glass lenses one at a time with just some glass panes. It's a lot cheaper. You can actually straight up craft gold ingots from gold ore. <laughs> you can make grass. You know, you can turn gunpowder into glowstone. You can actually change your infused wood into a brighter, vibrant version. You can just straight up make three iron ingots from one iron ore. So you've got ore tripling is now in this mod. So it's pretty darn good. And not only that, look at this, lapis lazuli. You get nine, you instantly get a block from that. You can just convert glistering melon slices and more. You can actually make redstone dust into gunpowder, then gunpowder into glowstone, and so on. You can also turn redstone ore straight up into a block. Uh, also, last but not least, we've got sand and clay and slime balls in the magma cream. So it's just really, really strong. This is a really important block now, uh, or multi-block, if you will. And you're definitely going to want as much liquid starlight as you can get. All right, and here we are at another demonstration area that is here just to show you a little bit about the tree beacon. This little guy here is actually really cheap. I mean, yes, you'll need to make a resonating gem, so therefore it is kind of gated behind this altar. But once you have it, it can give you wood for forever, basically, of 
any number of different types. Now I'm going to change my game mode to creative just so that I can show you this a little bit easier. I place down this tree beacon. It would normally use it up uh, as I'm in creative it doesn't but you can see it's giving a very big glowing effect. You can see lots of particles and it's a lot easier to see from above. You can see the area now that it currently affects. So any saplings that grow in this area will be affected by this. So if I remove all the glass in this area, grab myself a bit of bone meal and I can start demonstrating to you what happens. Wow, a really big glowy tree. We're going to do this. Oops, we've got a really big oak glowy tree. Oh, but some on the outside didn't work. Then we've got this. Oh, wait, what's going on? So normally, if you have some of these in the area, you can see that we've got a big jungle sapling, we've got acacia tree saplings. Sorry, I need to take this book off my, my offhand. And of course, we've got our, our dark oak. It will work with all of them, but only with a certain limited number of blocks that you can use. If you noticed, halfway through this oak tree, it actually stopped using this weird glowing effect. What does this thing do? It basically will take the glowing type of tree that you harvest, that you started growing, and as you can see here, it is currently making infinite wood, saplings, sticks, whatever might end up dropping from these trees. It will then bring it to this area. You can use some other methods, whether it be liquid or pushing lenses or things like that to gather things in an area for you, and you can start reaping the benefits of these. And yes, they will start producing their own saplings as well, so you don't need to worry about it, especially good for something like dark oak that doesn't really like to use those. But as I've reached the limit with this giant tree, <laughs> with the number of blocks that you could potentially end up assigning to a single tree beacon, it stopped partway through this oak tree. And that is what the limiting factor was. If I did a single tree sapling of each one of these, probably would have gotten away with it. Maybe, maybe not the dark oak. That might have been a bit too much by the end of it. But yeah, and definitely not the, the two by two of the jungle. <laughs> but then I would have had a good selection of trees going out. Now, yes, you can still have more of these. And even better, if you get yourself a collector crystal, like from an altar, or if you mine, or if you make your own version, you can therefore, let's actually uh, stack a couple here, and then I can use my linking tool to link here. As long as it's got open exposure to the sky, I think it does, it will then start speeding up how often this happens, and therefore getting you a lot quicker of a yield than what you were getting before. Okay, now, back over here, we're talking resplendent prisms. These things are really cool, and this is actually a lot of the reason why the Curios mod is required as part of this or, or you know something so that you can work with it but therefore this allows you to actually wear a prism and wreak the benefits of it in this case i have a plus one to fire protection and a plus one to unbreaking and i don't even have any enchantments on my my wonderful netherite armor if you look here the recipe for it is as such yes it uses another one of those dangerous shifting stars but once again, the outcome is really, really good, or can be. It, it might just be completely and utterly useless to you, depending upon what you end up getting. But don't worry, you can re-roll it. So, when you first make a resplendent prism from this recipe, you can then re-roll its stats by using this recipe. No, you don't have to have 10 of each. I've just got 10 of each in there so that I can do it multiple times. But the idea is that you use your resplendent prism and a bucket of liquid starlight, four stardust, and one resonating gem to make a re-roll of this one, because its current stats is sharpness and power. Well, that's useless to me because I'm in a peaceful world. I don't really care about sharpness and power. I just want something, maybe efficiency, or something to help me with other stats. There we go. Let's see what we got. I now have existing efficiency, existing unbreaking, and existing loyalty. So what that means, instead of saying before, plus one to this, it says plus one to existing version, you have to already have this enchantment on your items, yourself, or whatever it is that you're using for it to actually increase that stat. Now, there's so many different options that these things can actually have on them. I highly recommend you re-roll them a few times just to see what kind of things you might potentially end up getting. It's really, really good, good just to have these things in general because why not have extra bonus stats and effects on yourself? I mean, that, that's the whole part of the mod, right? So, I mean, you just put it in here and you, you get yourself some extra bonuses. I mean, 
extra fire protection, and I've already got protection on all my gear, potentially. Uh, why not? <laughs> so, yeah, definitely worth a look into so that you can get some really, really strong stuff. Look at that. Plus one level to all existing enchantments. Any enchantment that you have while you're holding it or wearing it, it would definitely give an extra bonus to that. Only down part is you can only wear one at a time. All right, and now we talk about ritual anchors. I don't know if you saw the last episode. I hope that you did because I talked a lot about rituals. This time I'm talking about how you can make them a little bit more, uh, well, do what you want them to do. Right here, I've got a great view. It's high up in the sky, as you can see on my little mini map up there. Um, I've got a, a collector crystal nearby, or I could even have one, you know, just kind of angled and focused over here if I really wanted to. And I plan on using the Avorcio one. This one's dangerous. If you, if you remember last time, it will mine out an entire area around this. I don't want to mine out this entire area. I'm glad it doesn't mine out the, the platform and everything that's on it, but I want to change that. So what you're going to need to do is actually go five blocks above. Now it does say this in the book. When you click on Ritual Anchor, it will say by placing one anchor five meters above the pedestal, and that's five blocks. So if I go one, two, three, four, five. So basically in this spot here, we're going to need four blocks between. That is your Ritual Anchor. You're going to want to set this up before you have your ritual started just in case the negative effects that you may experience nearby ends up messing things up. So I'm going to want to mine out this, the, like the heart over here of this section. So let's actually get over here. It's going to be a bit dark, but I'm going to place this here and then I'm going to use my uh, wand because why not? Let's just light it up. There we go. So you can see pretty much where it's at. Then with this, I'm going to need to link them together to here, which may not be the easiest thing to do. If you have this going a very long distance, well, because you, you, if you scroll off of your linking tool, you will break the connection. So it could be very challenging. But with that in mind, you can see now that it is linked because it has these glowing particles on it. Now, if I put down an Avorcio crystal, things will start mining. As you can see, it's already working up there to mine an area. And if I wanted to see the area that it would work with, then a Domic Resonator is what I would end up using. And you'd see here, it'll show you the area that it covers normally, but it will not show you the area that it is covering over there. So you have to kind of use a little bit of, you know, a guesswork on this case. Now this may change in the future, but in the current version, this is what it's set up for. And it's not been focused, so it's only going to be a rather small area that it's going to affect. I want to mine a whole bunch of stuff. So, of course, that's when you start putting around a whole bunch of crystals and linking this to here, therefore making it a much more powerful option. So, let me put down some lenses. All right, so you can see that it's more or less just given up up there. It's no longer really mining that much more. Well, let's actually increase that radius then, shall we? We'll just kind of focus this up a bit and make it as big as we possibly can. So as you can see, it's uh, expanded ever so slightly from where it had previously been working now that I've, uh, you know, set up a new refraction. But there is something that you need to know about rituals. In this case, I actually moved it back about five blocks or so just so that I could have a little bit more of an impact on where this was digging. But overall, you should know that some of them, like Ivorcio or even Evitus, maybe some others, they have a specific way that they actually end up working. So if I were to grab, let's say, some dirt to demonstrate this, I'm going to start building a pillar. And you'll notice that nothing is actually being dug out. That's because it doesn't constantly check every tick or every few ticks or anything like that. Essentially, there you go. It's in the middle of a cycle where it starts in the center and works its way out. Now, this isn't the same for every single one of these, but you should know that it will randomly start working outwards. So eventually, something like this. Let's say that I've got uh, one of these here. Let me actually 
relight a light that I just put out, my bad. Uh, but we've got a, a ritual anchor that is currently hooked up to something here. It will start close by to itself and randomly start picking a few blocks close to it, eventually hitting or gifting some kind of benefit or effect nearby. Then it will slowly randomly start picking from another layer outward further and continuing. And you can see here it's actually just taken out the next one down. And this is pretty much how it works. So if you're not seeing effects immediately because you either took the crystal out, you moved your ritual or something like that, you've redone the link, just keep in mind that it's got to restart the entire cycle from the beginning and slowly work its way out. Now, there are ways that you could speed this up, but honestly, uh, they'd probably end up crashing servers, if not single player worlds, because of how fast and effective they could potentially be set up for so therefore this is a, a very server friendly uh type setup and i just wanted to give you a little bit of an example of how things work so don't expect immediate results when you do something like add to an existing ritual affected area just know that it still is doing its cycle so by upgrading this ritual from the minimum to the maximum you are now seeing that it has to restart at the beginning and it actually ended up going through so I did not see an immediate effect once I did so I would have to wait for it to get all the way to the previous radius then it will start expanding out further so hopefully that will clear up some confusion when it comes to rituals and radius so that about does it for today's episode Tune in next time, and I think what we're probably going to be covering is how you can get to your iridescent altar setup, which will take you to uh, another chapter, as well as a whole bunch of collector crystal information, how you can make them, optimize them, split them, make multiples so that you don't have to go mining for them anymore either. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, and perhaps even others, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, come by, visit us on Twitch, and don't be afraid to spread the mischief. And until next time, folks. I'll see ya.